ألف لام را كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى صراط العزيز الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam when it comes to Isa ibn Maryam Jesus the son of Mary for us living here in the West, sometimes there's some confusion with regards to his life, with regards to his birth, with regards to things that happened in his life, and with regards to his death. And because we live in a society which is predominantly Christian, we hear a lot from them about Isa alayhi salam and from what happened in his life. And so there's confusion, not only amongst the Christians, but unfortunately amongst uh, the Muslims, with regards to things that happened in the life of Isa alayhi salam. And two of the main points in the life of Isa alayhi salam in which there is confusion are his birth and his death. Those are the two times in which there's a lot of uh, differing amongst the people, and amongst the non-Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Qur'an, إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمْ When the angels came to Maryam alayhi salam, and they called out to Maryam alayhi salam, and they said, يَا مَرْيَمْ Verily Allah azza wa jal gives you the glad tidings of a word. And that was Isa alayhi salam. And Isa alayhi salam was known as Al-Masih. And this word Al-Masih, the scholars, they say that what it means is someone who traveled a lot. Someone who traveled, you know, on the earth and he used to be a traveler. Someone who used to travel a lot. And we know that Isa alayhi salam, as well as other prophets, would travel and they would call people to Allah azza wa jal and they would call people to Islam. And Allah azza wa jal, he continues and he says that this prophet, Isa ibn Maryam, he will speak to the people. He will speak to the people in the cradle and in manhood. So Isa alayhi salam was given this miracle of being able to speak while he was still a baby. And we'll go into more detail with this inshallah. So Maryam alayhi salam when she heard this from this angel telling her that she was going to give birth to Isa alayhi salam. She said, Anna yakunu li walad. How is it possible that I will have a child? Walam yamsasni bashar. And nothing has touched me. No man has ever touched me. She wasn't someone who was married. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Qala kathaliki allahu yakhluku ma yasha. This is from the decree of Allah azza wa jal. If he wants to create something, idha qada amran, if he wants something to happen, whatever it is, then all he has to do is say, kun fayakun. All he has to say is be and it is. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and describes what Isa will do while he, is, while he is alive. And things that he will be given when it comes to his uh, blessings or when it comes to his miracles. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach Isa alayhi salam, he will teach him the book and he will teach him al-hikmah. And he will teach him the Torah 
and he will also teach him the Injil. And so these four things Allah Azza wa Jal taught Isa alayhi salam. When it comes to hikmah, when it comes to hikmah specifically, we can all talk about hikmah and we can all think about what hikmah is. We all mention and we've all heard this word before, the word hikmah. What is wisdom? What does wisdom mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Call in the way of your Lord with wisdom. But what does wisdom actually mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah, he, he says that he's going to teach Isa alayhi salam hikmah. He's going to teach him wisdom. But what is wisdom? What actually is the definition of wisdom? What defines a wise person? And the scholars, they say that when it comes to wisdom, it means putting something in its, right in its rightful place. To put something in its rightful place. And it's very simple when it comes to the definition, but it's something which is difficult to do. Allah gives wisdom to whosoever he wishes to do. And from the examples of, of hikmah that we can give, for example, is when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, would talk to people. He would look at the person and he would talk accordingly. If he was talking to a child, he would talk differently. If he met somebody who was from the city of Medina, from the city, he would talk to them differently. If he met someone from the Bedouins who lived in the desert, the way he would speak with them was different. And this is from the hikmah that a person has. This is from the hikmah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, you know, sometimes when we talk to people, some of us may think, well, you know, when I speak to somebody, I'm going to speak to everybody exactly the same. And I'm going to speak to my elderly the same way I'm going to speak to my children. I'm going to speak to my brothers and sisters the same way I speak to my friends. And this is something which doesn't uh, agree with hikmah. And it's not from wisdom. A man came to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and he said, Oh Sini, give me advice. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, La taghdab, don't be angry. Another man came to him asking him for advice. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said to this man, a different person, not the same person, a different person, he said to him, Kuf an hadha, and he held his tongue. And he said, Kuf an hadha, hold on to this. Now, why didn't he say the same piece of advice to both people? He didn't think, well, this is, you know, everybody's the same, I'm going to talk to everyone the same. You have to look at who you're talking to. Likewise, for example, when somebody talks to somebody who is always smiling and he's always joking, and he's got a, you know, a, a, let's say a, a lively sense of humor, and he's a bubbly character, he has good character. And so with a person like this, you joke with them, you smile with them. But if you meet someone, and you might know somebody who's very serious, and he doesn't joke around a lot, he doesn't you know, like to smile a lot, and that's the way some people are. So it wouldn't make sense in this situation for a person to you know, be joking around with him and slapping him on the back, and you know, he might make the person even more upset. So it, when it comes to hikmah, when it comes to wisdom, there's a way of dealing with people. And this is something which unfortunately you know, we, we tend to overlook. And Allah Azza wa carries on, in this ayah, and he mentions some of the signs, some of the things that Isa alayhi salam will be given. And Isa alayhi salam, as is mentioned by Allah azza wa jal, that Isa alayhi salam said, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord that I designed for you out of clay a figure like that of a bird. So he would make out of clay a figure resembling a bird and he would breathe into it and it becomes a bird. And this was from the miracles of Isa alayhi salam by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I will breathe into this piece of clay and it will become a bird by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also he would go to those who are blind. And he would go to those who were lepers. And he would cure them from their illnesses. The blind would see again. And the leper would be cured from this disease of the skin. And it was all by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also he would bring the dead to life. By the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was, this was all from the, the power and might of Allah azza wa jal. 
And also, he would inform the people of what they had eaten and what was happening in their houses. So this was Isa alayhi salam. And when Maryam alayhi salam heard this from the angels talking about the birth of Isa ibn Maryam and that she will give birth to Isa ibn Maryam, this blessed creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, it's mentioned that she went to a faraway place. فَحَمَّلَتْهُ فَانْتَبَذَتْ بِهِ مَكَانًا قَصِيًّا As is mentioned in the Quran. So she conceived him and she withdrew with him to a far place. After she had given birth to him, and when she gave birth to him, she said when she was giving birth that she hoped that she was dead or that she had never existed because of the anguish and the pain that she was going through. And it's mentioned that from beneath her, a voice called out, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, that don't become upset and don't be afraid. Verily, Allah Azza wa has made things easy for you. And so this voice, who was this voice? Who was calling out to her? Who was call, calling out and talking to her? The scholars, they say it was either Jibreel alayhi salam who said these words when she was giving birth, or they say it was Isa alayhi salam. They say it was one of the two. And when she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam, she withdrew and she went to a faraway place. And it's mentioned by some of the scholars that the place she went to was Bayt al otherwise known as Bethlehem. In, in, in English, they call it Bethlehem or Bayt al And when she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam, she went back to the people and obviously she was someone who wasn't married and she was known to be someone who was pious. And she was ordered by Allah Azza wa Jal not to speak. She was ordered to fast. And the fast in those days wasn't only just for food and drink, but it was also for speech. So a person wasn't able to speak. You couldn't eat and drink and you couldn't speak. And so she went back to her people and it's mentioned in the Quran, فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُ She went back to her people holding him, holding Isa alayhi salam. And when the people saw this, they were shocked. Because they never knew Maryam to be like this. She was from the Saliha, from those who were pious, from those who used to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And so when she came with this, with this baby in her arms, they said to her, Ya Maryam, لَقَدْ جِئْتِ شَيْئًا فَرِيَّا O Maryam, the people in the town, they said to her, O oh Mary, indeed you have brought a thing which is fari, something which is a mighty thing, a serious thing, a big thing. And they said, Ya Ukhta Harun, O oh sister of Harun, O oh sister of Harun, your father was not someone who used to commit adultery. And your mother wasn't an unchaste woman. And we know of you to be from a good family. And they called her Ukhta Harun. Now, Haru, uh, Maryam السلام, didn't have a brother who was called Harun. So why did they call her the sister of Harun? They called her, Ya Ukhta Harun. They said, Oh, sister of Harun. And the scholars differ. And they say, one of the things they say is Harun was somebody who lived during the same time. And he was someone who was a pious man. He was someone who used to worship Allah in that time, during that time. And so they mentioned her and they connected her with him because she was also someone who was pious and righteous. And that's why they said, O oh, sister of Harun. Other narrations mention, and other scholars say that the reason why they called her the sister of Harun was because he was someone who wasn't righteous. And he wasn't someone who was pious. Rather, he was someone who was a fasiq. He was a sinner. And so, because of what Maryam alayhi salam had, bought, had brought, they decided to call her by this bad name calling her the sister of Harun, this cursed man. Others also mention that they use Ukhta Harun, mentioning the brother of Musa السلام, because he was also someone who was righteous. He was someone who was known to be righteous. So they called her Ukhta Harun, connecting her to someone else who was righteous. So when they said this to her, 
And they said to her, you bought something which is great. لَقَدْ جِئْتِ شَيْءٍ And we don't know that your father or your mother were people who were sinners. And they were expecting a response from Maryam alayhi salam. And she pointed to Isa alayhi salam. And she never said anything because she was fasting. She was ordered by Allah Azza wa Jal to fast. And when they saw Maryam alayhi salam pointing to the cradle, they started to mock her. And they were thinking, how can you tell us why you're pointing to your child? How can we talk to the child? Why don't you talk to us? And they said, كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَهْدِ صَبِيَّةِ How can we talk to somebody who is in the cradle? Somebody who is still a baby, uh, you know, a, a newly born baby. Why are you telling us to talk to this child? And then Isa السلام, replied to them while he was in the cradle. And this was from the miracles of Isa السلام, And he said, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ Verily, I am a slave of Allah. Qala inni Abdullah. The very first words that come out of his mouth before anything else, he says, Verily, I am the slave of Allah. Inni Abdullah. Straight away, destroying the, the beliefs of the Christians who say that Isa alayhi salam is God or he's the son of God. Qala inni Abdullah. Atiani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiya. He said, Verily, I am a slave of Allah. First and foremost, I am a slave of Allah. He has given me the scripture, وَجَعَلَنِي nabiya, And he has made me a prophet. وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتْ And he has made me blessed wherever I may be. Wherever I go, I will be blessed. Why? Because he was a prophet of Allah. He was a messenger of Allah. وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا And Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered me and he has advised me with the salah and with zakah so long as I live. وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And he says, and I have been ordered to be dutiful to my mother. So now, Isa alayhi salam, after talking about being the slave of Allah, and talking about him being ordered to pray and to give zakah for as long as he lives, he now turns his attention to Maryam alayhi salam. And saying that I've been ordered to be dutiful to my mother, and Allah Azza wa hasn't made me arrogant or unblessed. Now this second part, when he mentions his mother, this also destroys the beliefs of the Jews. And they say, when it comes to Isa alayhi salam, that he was as a result of illegal uh, relations that Maryam alayhi salam had. Let me ask the secret of Allah from this. This is what the Jews say. And they say that Maryam alayhi salam had illegal uh, relations outside of marriage, and this child was a result of this illegal relationship. And so this is what the Jews say. And when it comes to the information regarding Isa alayhi salam, the final thing that he said was, وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وَلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبَعَثُ حَيَّ And peace be upon me. And he's saying all of this in the cradle. He's saying all of this in the cradle. Peace be upon me the day I was born and the day I die and the day I shall be raised alive again. Now when the people heard this, they split into different categories. So of course you had the Jews who said that this was some type of magic and this was some type of sorcery and that he isn't a prophet, and he's not a god, and he's not any of these things, but his mother had relations, illegal relations, and she bore this child, and it's an Ill Ill illegitimate child. And they don't believe in Isa alayhi salam. The Jews don't believe in Isa alayhi salam. So you have this category. And then you have the other category, who are the Christians, who when they heard this, when they heard of this baby who spoke, they thought that this baby in and of itself was God. They thought it was God himself. And so they started to worship Isa alayhi salam. And then you have the third category who are the Muslims, the true believers. And they were those people who believed that he was the slave of Allah and he was the messenger of Allah. And this was the three categories of people who were present at the time. When it comes to the Christians 
and the things that they say with regards to Isa alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that even they have doubt over what actually happened even they have confusion when it comes to the issue of Isa alayhi salam وَمَا قَتَلَهُ وَمَا صَلَبُهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't crucify him and nor was he crucified and nor was he killed but he was raised up and he mentions in the Quran also how the people are confused he mentions that even they themselves the Christians are confused and this is the case even today you have them saying for example the Trinity they say that Jesus was God and that he was the son of God and they say that there were three gods but this three trinity is actually one God so there's this confusion when it comes to even their own beliefs and they don't understand even what they believe when it comes to Isa alayhi salam and when it comes to God the Bani Israel the children of Israel who were living in that time and living in that area when they deviated from the straight path from the path of Allah azza wa jal they would go and they would spread corruption on the earth. And all the desires that they may have had, all pleasures which were forbidden to them, anything that their desires wished that they wanted to do, they went out and they started to do these things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point, at that point when this started to happen, this is why Allah azza wa jal sent down the messenger Isa alayhi salam in order to rectify the affairs of the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also mentions in the Quran, uh, he also mentions in the Quran, when it comes to Isa alayhi salam, that he himself testifies to the coming of another messenger after him. And this was even mentioned in the Injil of Isa alayhi salam, in the Gospel of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam was given a book as we mentioned earlier and that book was the Injil known as the Gospel and even in that book it's mentioned that there would be a prophet after him known as Ahmad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the Quran he says and remember when Isa alayhi salam the son of Maryam said O children of Israel Ya Bani Israel I am the messenger of Allah confirming what came to you in the Torah and he's talking to the Jews and he's telling them that I have come to confirm what came to you in the Torah. To put emphasis on what came in the Torah. The original teaching of the Jews, which was Tawheed, to worship one God. And I am giving glad tidings of a messenger, مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ Ahmad, A messenger who will come after me, and his name is Ahmad. His name is Ahmad. And Ahmad comes from the same root as Muhammad. Hamida Yahmadu. In the Arabic language, it all comes from the same root, which is Hamida, okay, to praise. And Muhammad and Ahmad both come from the same root. And one of the names of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was Ahmad. Isa alayhi salam, when he was growing up, they say that Maryam alayhi salam took him and they left uh, Jerusalem for fear of his life because the Jews when they heard of all this commotion that was taking place with regards to Isa alayhi salam and the things that he was saying while he was in the cradle there was a danger that he might be killed and so Maryam alayhi salam left with him and went to another place and he grew up in a different area and some say that this place was Egypt some say that it was uh, Syria but Allah knows best and while he was growing up Things happened while he was growing up that was from the wahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, he would be with other children. Isa alayhi salam would be with other children and he would tell them, shall I tell you what your parents and what your family is making for you from the food in your house? And so he would tell the children what his mother is making for them at home what they are cooking for them. And when the children would go home, they would see and they would ask their mother, what have you made for me? And the mother would tell them 
that we made such and such. And then they would say to their mother that Isa alayhi salam has told us that you were going to make this. And this was from the, from the, the miracles of Isa alayhi salam that was given to him by Allah azza wa jal at a young age. And so when the parents and when the families heard this, that Isa alayhi salam was doing this, they kept their children away from him. They kept their children away from him. It's also mentioned uh, in uh, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya of Ibn Kathir, the famous book of history, that sometimes there would be gatherings of people where they would drink wine. So they would have a gathering, and wine was obviously allowed in those days in the, in the nations of the past. And there would be no wine left. And so it's mentioned that Isa alayhi salam would go and he would touch the bottles and the bottles would fill up with wine again. And this was from the miracles of Isa alayhi salam that was given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he became older and he was given prophethood, he went back to Jerusalem. He went back to that location to give da'wah and to call the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was his message. His message was a message of Tawheed, just like the messengers of the past, just like the messenger Musa alayhi salam, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Nuh alayhi salam. The message was a message of Tawheed. And subhanAllah, when it comes to the idea of Tawheed, and the idea of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that a person shouldn't worship except Allah azza wa jal, this is something which subhanAllah, it's something which is unique. It's something which is unique to Islam. There's no other religion on the face of this earth which calls to worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone. There's no other religion on the face of this earth which calls to worshipping just one God. To recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb and He's the Creator and He's the Sustainer and He's the one who keeps everything in existence and He's control over all our affairs. And the fact that we, when we worship, we devote all our acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something which is very unique in Islam. There's no other religion like this on the face of this earth. They always attribute something to something else. And so when it comes to this basic tenet of faith, this basic principle of our religion, it's something which we shouldn't take lightly. This is the crux of our religion. The basis of why we were created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I haven't created jinn and mankind except to worship me. And the greatest blessing that a person can have, brothers and sisters, is Islam itself. The greatest blessing that a person has is to know and recognize that he was given the blessing of being a Muslim. Why is this the greatest blessing? Out of all the things that we have, when it comes to our hearing, when it comes to our you know, being able to, to see and being able to speak and being able to walk, all these blessings that Allah Azza wa has given us, when it comes to our wealth, when it comes to our families, why is it that Islam is the greatest blessing? Who can tell me? Out of all the things, all the blessings that we have, why is it Islam that is the greatest blessing that a person has? Who can tell me? Take us, to, take us to paradise. Jazakallah khair. Anybody else? Okay, so it's a sin that separates us, uh, and it distinguishes us from the people of hell, and it stops us from going to hellfire. Very good. When it comes to why it's the greatest blessing, and you're both right, alhamdulillah, when it comes to why Islam is the greatest blessing is because we know our purpose in life. We know why we're here. We know what we're doing on earth. Whereas the non-Muslims, they have no idea. And you hear them say all the time, you know, I'm just going to enjoy myself while I'm still alive. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to do whatever I can because time is short. You know, life is too short. So we need to have as much fun as we can. And then once we're dead, that's it. That's the end of our life. And subhanAllah, you know, when you talk to them, you realize they don't actually have a life. And they don't have this void uh, filling up in their, in their souls. It's an empty void in their, heart, in their hearts, in their souls. And yet we as Muslims, we know our purpose in life. We know why we're here. 
And when we speak to these people, they say we don't believe in a life after death. We believe that we're going to die and that's it, that's the end. That's the end of, uh, of creation, that's the end of our life. It's game over after that. And you think, subhanAllah, you talk to them and you say, well, what about those who didn't live a long life? What about those children who died? What about those people who died as teenagers? What about those people who were murdered, those people who were killed? They didn't get a very nice life. They didn't get justice. What about those people, for example, you hear on the TV now about the Jimmy Savile? Yeah, Jimmy wasn't fixing anything. You know, he was causing more problems than he was fixing, subhanAllah. But now nobody can do anything. You know, and they were complaining, they were talking about on the radio and on television about what they can do. There's nothing they can do. Because it's too late. He's died and he's been causing all these problems, having all these relations with these young boys and girls. And there's nothing anybody can do. Now is that justice? And you hear about other, you know, serial killers and mass murderers who lived. Look at, for example, over a hundred years ago, you had someone called Jack the Ripper. Nobody ever caught him. He went around killing so many people in brutal ways. Nobody ever caught him. They all had conspiracies about who he might have been, but nobody knows who he was. Now, he's just going to get away with this. Nothing's going to happen. No justice is going to be given. So this idea of no life after death, it doesn't make sense. It's not practical. Knowing for a fact that Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Adil and is going to judge over the people when it comes to the Day of Judgment over everything that they did, every single thing they did and every single thing they said, and the fact that it's written down. Kiram and Katibin Ya'lamuna ma tafalun. Blessed creatures who write down everything that we do. So much so that on the Day of Judgment, when we, are, you know, when we rise up again, when Allah Azza wa Jal gives us life after this death, after this temporary death, and it's only a temporary death. When we die, it might be that we die for thousands and hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of years. But some of the scholars, they say that when a person wakes up on the Day of Judgment, and it's mentioned in the Quran, that he will feel like he only slept for a few seconds, or a few minutes, or a few hours. He won't feel like he slept for a thousand or hundreds of thousands of years. How is this possible? Some of the scholars, they say, it's just like sleep, for example. When a person is tired and he goes to sleep and he closes his eyes, it only feels like a few minutes that he wakes up again, when in fact he's been sleeping for six, seven hours. And so when a person wakes up on the Day of Judgment, he's going to be held to account for every single thing that he said. Every single thing that he said. And sometimes, subhanAllah, when we do something, or when we say something and it's recorded, maybe we record it on our iPhones or on our cameras, you know, or it's a text message that we text message that we sent to somebody maybe six months ago, or it's a video of us doing something six months ago, or one year ago, or two years ago, and we look at it, you know, a year down the line, two years down the line, and we look at what we said and what we did, and we can't believe that we said those things. We think, Subhanallah, did I really say that? Was I really that stupid that I would say those things? Or how silly was I when I saw myself doing those things on the, you know, two years ago on, on the iPhone and I saw that video? And I didn't know you were recording this. Did you record that, 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 that time when we did this? And so you think, SubhanAllah, if that was how we felt when we saw something or heard something that we said two years ago, imagine on the Day of Judgment when everything that we ever said is in front of us. Everything that we ever said. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that when somebody sees everything in front of him, he will say, Mali had al-kitab, what's with this book? La yugadiru sagheeratan wa la kabira. It has not left anything small or big, illa ahsaha, except that it's mentioned in this book. And so, Isa alayhi salam, he called the people to Islam. And he called the people to Allah azza wa jal. And this was his message. And this was what he called to. When it comes to his death, of course, because he was propagating Islam and the Tawheed and worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone, the Jews who were there, they had some enmity towards him. And they decided that they would kill him. And Isa alayhi salam, when he was with his disciples, and they say he had 12 disciples. In some narrations, they say he had uh, 17 or 18 disciples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
it's mentioned that they came to, they, they, you know, they went to look for Isa alayhi salam. And when Isa alayhi salam was with his disciples, it's mentioned that he wasn't the one who was caught. So when they went out and they tried to catch someone who they thought was Isa alayhi salam, a person was brought in the likeness of Isa alayhi salam. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ And they claim, they claimed at the time, those people, that they said, إِنَّا قَتَلَنَا الْمَسِيحِ They said, verily, we have killed the Messiah. We have killed Al-Masih ibn Maryam. إِنَّا قَتَلَنَا الْمَسِيحِ عِيسَى ibn Maryam رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Look at the arrogance when they say this. They say, we have killed the Messiah, Isa, son of Maryam, the messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He declares in the Qur'an, and He says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ And they did not kill him. وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ And they didn't crucify him. Isa alayhi salam wasn't crucified. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ But it appeared to them that it was Isa alayhi salam, when in fact it was somebody else. And it's mentioned when they entered the house where Isa alayhi salam had, uh, where he was staying, and he was with his disciples, before they came, Allah azza wa jal raised him to himself. He raised him to Allah Azza wa Jal. And he put somebody in Isa alayhi salam's place who looked like him. And in other narrations it's mentioned that Isa alayhi salam said to the disciples, which one of you would uh, want a great reward? Meaning to be a shaheed. And so one of them put themselves forward and he was given the likeness of Isa alayhi salam. And when those oppressors came in, when the Jews came in, they took uh, they took this man who had the resemblance of Isa alayhi salam, when in fact he wasn't Isa alayhi salam. And this man, he was given a great reward because he was a shaheed. He died a martyr. From the things that's mentioned when it comes to the, the life of Isa alayhi salam is the story of the ma'idah, the table spread. The table spread with food. It's mentioned that Isa alayhi salam and the Hawariyin, the disciples of Isa alayhi salam, they fasted for 30 days. And at the end of these 30 days, they wanted a big feast. And they wanted a kind of celebration. And so they asked Isa alayhi salam, they said, هَلْ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يُنَزِلَ عَلَيْنَا مَائِدَةً مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ Is it possible for your Lord to send down to us مَائِدَةً مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ To send down to us a table spread with food from the heavens. And so Isa alayhi salam, he said, قَالَتْ تَقُوا اللَّهَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Fear Allah if you verily are true believers. If you truly are believers and fear Allah azza wa jal. And the scholars, they mention, why did, Allah, why did Isa alayhi salam say fear Allah? Some of the scholars, they mention, because of the fact that they are asking for a table spread from the heavens. And some of the scholars, they say, because the disciples, they said, هَلْ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَبُّكَ they said, is your Lord able to? And when they said, is your Lord able to? It was as if they were questioning the power and the ability of Allah Azza wa Jal. هَلْ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يُنَزِلْ عَلَيْنَا مَائِدَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Is your Lord able to send down a table spread with food for us? تَكُونَ لَنَا عِيدًا لِأَوَّلِنَا وَآخِرِنَا It will be a day of celebration for us. وَآيَةً مِنْكَ And a sign from you. A sign that you are a messenger. And so Isa alayhi salam said, Qala taqullah in kuntum mu'mineen. He said, fear Allah if you truly are believers. And eventually he made dua to Allah azza wa jal. And it's mentioned that every time he would make dua, that this ma'idah would come down from the heavens. And each time he would make dua, it would descend slowly, slowly. Each time he would make dua, it would come lower and lower. Until it came down to the ground and they had their feast and they had their food. And this was another of the miracles of of Isa alayhi salam. When it comes to the death of Isa alayhi salam, as we mentioned, Isa alayhi salam wasn't killed himself. But rather Allah azza wa jal raised him up to come down before the Day of Judgment. And it's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment that Isa alayhi salam will come down and when he does come down, and some of the scholars mentioned that it's going to be in Syria, in a, a masjid in Damascus. And when he does descend, when he goes to the masjid, the people, 
will want him to lead the prayer. And he'll tell the Imam to lead the prayer to show the people that he is going to be following the Sharia and the law of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the scholars also mentioned that when he was raised, he was 33 years old. They say he was 33 years old when he was raised up. After the death of Isa alayhi salam, as we mentioned, there were different people who said different things. Some said that they had killed Isa alayhi salam. And others from the Christians, they said that he was a God and he was a son of God. And obviously they have this confusion now where they say, how is it possible that Jesus can die on the cross? How is it possible that Allah Azza wa himself can die? And also when it comes to Isa alayhi salam, some of them held the belief after he had been raised up some of them held the belief that Isa alayhi salam was a messenger of Allah. He was a messenger of Allah and he was a prophet of Allah and he was a slave of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he wasn't a god and he wasn't you know, the, the illegitimate child of, Mar of Maryam alayhi salam. And so they held this belief. And it's mentioned that they were killed and they were persecuted during that time. Those who believed in Isa alayhi salam as a slave and as a messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal, they were persecuted in those times. And they were a minority. So these are just some of the things that I wanted to mention with regards to Isa alayhi salam and the life of Isa alayhi salam. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in Surah Ma'idah, he says that on the day of judgment, I will ask Isa alayhi salam, I will say, A'anta qulta lin nas. Did you ask the people, did you tell the people to worship me and to worship my mother? And Isa alayhi salam will deny this. He will say, Subhanak, glory be to you. How is it possible for me? I'm not in any place to tell the people to worship me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell Isa alayhi salam. And Isa alayhi salam will testify that he never told anybody to worship him. And he never told anybody to worship his mother. And as we mentioned, when he was born, the very first things he said, before anything else, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ Verily, I am the slave of Allah. آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا He has given me the book. What book was he given? What book was he given? No. Injil. Injil. The Gospel. Injil. آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا He has given me the Injil. He has given me the book, which was the Injil. And he has made me a prophet. So the very first thing that he said was that he was the slave of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran when it comes to the Christians and the Jews and the Mushrikeen, those who commit shirk. He says, He said that you will find you will find, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, those people who have the most enmity, the most hatred towards you, are the Jews and those who commit shirk, the mushrikun, those who worship idols. Those are the people who hate Islam the most. They are most in you know, staunch when it comes to their hatred of Islam. They're staunch enemies of Islam. وَلَا تَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى And you will find those who are closest to their love when it comes to the believers, when it comes to the Muslims, are those who say, إِنَّا نَصَارَى Verily, we are Christians. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those who are closest to Islam are the Christians. And it's unfortunate now that you see the Christians and the Jews seem to be working together even though the Jews themselves don't believe in Maryam alayhi salam. And they don't believe in Isa alayhi salam. Whereas the Muslims do. And you hear many stories of Christians becoming Muslim. All the time. Yet very rarely do you hear of a Jew becoming a Christian, uh, a Jew becoming a Muslim, or someone who used to worship idols from the, you know, the, the Hindu religion or the Sikh religion, becoming a Muslim. And it does happen, but not as much as someone who is a Christian. And you know, for us, especially living here, whenever we talk to these people who are Christians, 
it's always important to try to mention uh, our respect and our love for Isa alayhi salam and for her mother, uh, for his mother. And this is something which differentiates us with the Jews. When Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, when he met the king of Abyssinia, when he was called to meet the king of Abyssinia, and they made hijra, a group of the companions made hijra to Abyssinia, they were called to be questioned in front of the king. Because he had heard that they say things about Isa alayhi salam. Yani that they don't believe that he was a god, and we don't believe that he was a god. But subhanAllah, you know, we mentioned about hikmah, we mentioned about wisdom, and having wisdom. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, when he spoke to the king of Abyssinia about Isa alayhi salam, what did he do? What did he recite? He recited the surah of Maryam, talking about Maryam alayhi salam. Now he never mentioned to the king that yes, we don't believe that Isa alayhi salam was the son of God, Isa alayhi salam was God. And he wasn't confrontational when he came to his debate and his conversation with the king. And he used hikmah, and he used those things which would bring the king closer to Islam. And it did work, because the Muslims got to stay in Abyssinia, those who came from Quraysh in Mecca to bring back those Muslims who had left Mecca, they had to be sent back. And eventually the king himself became a Muslim. And this is from the hikmah of giving da'wah. Sometimes, you know, we see people doing something wrong, and, you know, we lash out at them straight away. Especially if it's somebody we know, like a, you know, a, a family member or a relative. You know, we see them doing something wrong and we're waiting for them to do something wrong. Because then we can just lash out at them and really start mentioning a hadith and ayat. And mashallah, you know, you're, all of a sudden you're like Sheikh al-Islam. Somebody does something wrong and you just want to you know, destroy them right there and then. But subhanAllah, this isn't from wisdom. Because when that person, when he hears this from you and he's seeing you all angry and he's, you're throwing all this ammunition his way, it's not going to bring him closer to Islam. It's not going to make him leave those things that he was doing. He's not going to listen to you and think, you know, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. I don't think I should be doing this. He's going to be upset. He's not going to like the way you were acting towards, you know, the way you were acting towards him. So there's hikmah in which a way the person who's giving da'wah deals with those people that, you know, are going astray. Regardless of who they are, there's a certain way to speak to people. And there's a certain way to go about giving da'wah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the ability to give da'wah in the appropriate way. Allahumma ghfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat inna Allah ya'murukum bil-adli wal-ihsan wa ita'idhi al-qurba wa yinha'i al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tazakkaroon fadhkuru Allah al-azim al-jalil yadhkurukum wa du'hu lan ya'mi yizidkum wa la'dhikru Allah ya'ala wa'ula wa akbar wa Inshallah, I'll take a couple of questions, inshallah, because we, have, we still have a bit of time. So if anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll do my best to try to answer them, inshallah. Nobody? No questions? Maybe we just have to wait a little while somebody's, until somebody's brave enough to put their hand up. When it came to uh, Judas, I haven't come across that name in uh, Ibn Kathir's al Bidawa Nihaya. But he did have disciples. And it's mentioned that, uh, uh, it's mentioned in al Bidawa Nihaya of Ibn Kathir that some of the disciples actually betrayed him. So when the, when the Jews came to look for Isa alayhi salam, uh, one of them, one of the disciples told them where Isa, where Isa alayhi salam was staying. And so they went to his house. And obviously by then, Allah Azza wa had raised him up and he had, you know, other plans for Isa alayhi salam. But I haven't come across that specific name. There are other names that I mentioned, like uh, uh, in Arabic, uh, Mataya, which is Matthew, and uh, Yusuf is also mentioned, I think, from the disciples of Isa alayhi salam. Hikmah, we mentioned the definition of, of hikmah in the talk. Does anybody remember? 
the definition of hikmah, the definition of wisdom. Putting something in its rightful place. That's the definition of wisdom. To put something in its rightful place. So for example, if you're talking to an elderly person, you know, you talk to them in the appropriate way. If you're talking to a child, you're not going to talk to a child the same way you talk to, you know, somebody who just completed a doctorate in engineering, for example. You know, there's a difference. So this is, when it, this is what hikmah is. وَضْعُ الشَّيْفِ مَوْضِعِي Putting something in its rightful place. And it's mentioned once there was a, a, a quick story, there was a wedding. And, you know, it was a very joyful occasion. Two people were getting married and people were very happy. And there was a da'i who came, you know, somebody who used to spread the word of Islam. And, you know, everybody was happy. It was a joyful occasion. People were celebrating. And they asked this speaker to, do, to give a few words. And when he got up on the stage, he started to talk about death. And how kulu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every soul shall taste death. And everybody was happy and, you know, they, they got all dis depressed and disappointed because they started talking about death. And this isn't from hikmah. It wasn't from wisdom. Everybody knows that every soul shall taste death. But it wasn't munasib for the occasion. It wasn't from hikmah to talk about this, rather it was better to talk about the purpose of life, the purpose of creation, you know, uh, the blessings and virtues of marriage, the importance of getting married, and so on and so forth. So it's something which, the definition of it is very easy, but implementing it is something which is hard. وَمَنْ يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَا خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah Azza wa Jal gives hikmah and wisdom to whomsoever he wishes. And whosoever is given hikmah, whosoever is given wisdom, فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَا خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Then verily he's given, you know, a lot of good. So we should always ask Allah Azza wa Jal to increase our hikmah and our wisdom. Jazakallah khair. Subhanakallahum wa hamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.